Hi, it's Lindsay from The Stitch Fits and I am super excited about my very first Nomi pattern. I have been waiting for this forever. It's been a year in the making and I am just so excited that it's finally here. My very first pattern is ME2032. It's a dress, view A is a short dress with two front slits and view B is a longer dress with one front slit. Um, the back has an open back kind of, and then a tab that closes with two buttons. I'm just super excited to finally have it here and see what you guys make. I'm gonna do a sew along right now. If you guys have any questions, you can DM me on Instagram or comment under the video and I'll try to answer those. All right, let's get started. So this is ME2032 and on the back you'll find all the fabric and notions you need. You'll need two one half inch buttons and a 12 inch invisible zipper. You'll see finished measurements and a size chart. I recommend looking at the finished measurements when choosing your size. And you'll have, there's two views. There's view A, that's a short skirt, and two front slits, and a longer skirt, which is view B, with one front slit. Now, if you open it up, you'll find the tissue pattern, and you'll find instructions. Once you choose your size, you can go ahead and trace your pattern or cut it out, and then you will cut out your fabric. Make sure you mark all your notches and your darts, especially on the bodice. It is very important to have all those notches or else when we make it, it's going to be very confusing. I'm going to be making view A, which is the shorter skirt and two front slits. If you want to make view B, you're going to use all the same pattern pieces. You're just going to cut the skirts at the full length and it has one slit. This is the bodice front and you're going to cut it on the fold. You're going to cut one main and one lining. Make sure you mark all those notches and the darts. And then on piece two, it's the front inset piece. And you're going to need two main and two lining. And then you're also going to need two interfacing for this one. And this is piece three, it's the shoulder strap. I'm gonna cut this a little different. I'll cut it the same width, but I'm gonna cut mine 18 inches so that I can add strap adjusters. And this is piece five, it's the bodice back. You're gonna need two main and two lining. This is piece six, it's the back tab. It's gonna be connected to the back bodice. You're gonna need two main, two lining, and two interfacing. And this is piece seven, it's the loops for the buttons. You're just gonna cut one on the bias. And this is piece eight, it's the front skirt. You're gonna cut it on the fold and I'm gonna cut it at the cut line for view A. If you wanna make the longer skirt, just cut it at the very bottom of the pattern piece. And this is piece nine, it's the front side skirt. I'm also going to cut this at view A cut line. And if you want the longer skirt, just cut it at the bottom. And this is piece 10. It's the back skirt. Make sure you mark all those darts. And I'm going to cut it at the same cut line for view A. Cut it at the bottom if you want to do the longer version. And now this is the instructions. And this is just kind of some sewing information. What the interfacing looks like. Lining, main fabric. Um, and then there's a glossary if you want to know what any of the terms mean in the instructions. And now let's go over the instructions. You're first going to interface the front inset piece, the back tab, and the strap. Now I'm not going to interface the strap because I'm going to do it a little bit different and I'll show you that later. And then we are first going to start with the bodice front and lining and I am going to sew the darts on each and stay stitch the upper neckline. Okay, I've sewed the darts on both the main and the lining on the front bodice and I've stay stitched the neckline. Okay, I also sewed the straps and I did it a little different than the instructions. The instructions shows to use a loop turner or a safety pin, but I knew that this fabric would be hard to turn. So I just folded it like bias tape and then stitched it down. Okay, now you're going to grab the shorter two straps and we're going to attach it to the front inset piece. You're going to place the shorter one 
on the outside edge of each cup. There's going to be three dots. You're going to place it in between the two outer dots like that and then go ahead and pin it and then you're going to repeat that on the other cup. All right, now we are going to put the tie strap next to the shoulder strap. This is gonna be the strap that ties around your neck. It's gonna be on the inside of this piece, the front inset piece. And there, you're gonna put it on the inside two dots, just like that, right next to it. You're gonna pin it and then repeat for the other cup. Okay, now the instructions say to baste the straps down. I don't really feel like that's necessary. I'm just gonna put the other front inset pieces on top of it right sides together and then sew across the top at 5 8 inch okay now we're going to understitch these pieces how you're going to do that is open it up and push the seam allowance underneath to the lining side and you're going to stitch a line right there by the center or by the seam line um, it's going to be on the lining side though and holding the seam allowance down. This makes it so that when you fold it back under and press it, the lining doesn't poke out. It lays nice and flat. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see this. I've understitched it. It's just right along the edge and you can see that the seam allowance is um, stitched down. Now you're going to trim the seam allowance. You can do this before, but I just like to do it afterwards. Um, and then when you press it, it's gonna keep the lining um, nice and snug underneath there without poking out. Okay, you're gonna repeat all those steps for the next inset piece, and then you're going to press them flat and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now you're going to baste the bottom of the inset piece just so that it's nice and closed and flat. And now we are going to attach these inset pieces to the bodice. And here's the instructions. You can see you're stitching from dot to dot to dot. So there's a center dot and then there's two side dots. Okay, so you're going to take the inset piece and flip it and put it right sides together. You're going, there's going to be a dot on the bodice at the top and on the neckline and you're going to match this little corner right here with the dot on the bodice and then you'll pin it and match the rest of the notches and then you'll go ahead and do it with the other side and repeat all those steps matching up all the notches the two pieces will kind of overlap in the center of the bodice and the notches will align Here's what it looks like after you've sewed the inset pieces on. Next, you're gonna take the bodice lining and fold it up by 5 8 inch, and then you'll trim it 3 8 inch. Now we're going to attach the lining to the main bodice and put it right sides together, pin the underarm area and the neckline, and then we'll sew all the way across 5 8 inch. Then you want to trim the seam allowance down so it's not as bulky. And this is what it looks like after you turn it right side out. You're going to want to give it a nice press and get everything laying nicely. And then we're going to move on to the skirt. So grab your skirt pieces. You'll have a center skirt and two side skirts. This is for the front. Um, you're going to finish the edges either with a zigzag stitch or an, your overlocker. Um, finish it before you sew them together. I actually forgot right here to finish the edges before I sewed it, so I did it afterwards. You can still do it, but it's easier if you do it before you sew the pieces together. Make sure when you sew it, you leave the bottom open where the notch is. Um, that'll be the slit. After you've sewed it, press open your seams. This is the slit at the bottom. 
If you're going to be making the longer skirt, you're just going to sew it and then there will be one slit and there's a separate notch for that. Okay, now we're going to attach the bodice to the skirt front. Um, the, we're going to flip the lining up when we attach it and not sew that part yet. And you're going to align the notches with the seam lines on the skirts. It'll all line up perfectly and just go ahead and pin it. And then you're going to sew that at a 5 8 inch and just make sure you don't catch the lining when you're sewing it. Okay, so I have attached the bodice to the skirt front and now I've pressed the seam allowance up towards the bodice and you're going to trim it down so that it's not as bulky. So now we're going to flip the lining down and the instructions say to slip stitch the lining down. Um, I just didn't really feel like hand sewing right now, so I just stitched in the ditch. So I basically pinned it down and then stitched in that that seam line. And I it doesn't bother me, but you can slip stitch it if that's what you want. Okay, now we're going to stitch the loops for the buttons. And it the piece is cut on the bias. You're going to fold it in half right sides together and stitch it at a 1 4 inch seam allowance. And then you're going to trim it. And the instructions say to turn it with a needle and a thread. Um, I like to use a loop turner, so that's what I did. But either way works. Once you've turned it, you'll have a skinny little strap that you're going to cut in half to create two loops. This is gonna go on our next step, which is the back tab. Once you've cut the loop in half and you have two loops, you're going to attach it to the back tab. You're going to sew it down at 5 8 inch and there's two notches for those loops. I've stitched it down at 5 8 inch and now you're going to take the lining piece and put it right sides together over the loop pieces. And then you'll stitch it down at 5 8 inch along the top. And then you'll repeat that step for the other back tab with without the loops because this side will have the two buttons. Then you're going to want to understitch both pieces and trim the seam allowance down. Okay, so now that you've understitched it, you're going to put it right sides together and you're going to sew the rest of it. You can leave the edge opposite to the loops open and that's how we'll turn it. Okay, now that I've finished the back tabs, we're going to attach it to the back bodice. And to attach it, there's two dots on the inside and you're going to put the back tab in between those dots and slant it downwards like this. You're going to pin it and then sew it at 5 8 inch. And then you'll take your linings for the back bodice and you're going to fold it up at 5 8 inch. You'll press both of those and then you're going to trim the seam allowance down. And now you'll take your lining and you're going to put it over the back bodice right sides together. Okay, so now you want to sew the lining and the back bodice. You're going to sew up to there. Stop at that dot and then start at the dot right next to it and sew the underarm area. And then you're going to trim it. Now you're going to turn it right sides out and press it. Next you'll sew the darts on the skirt back pieces and then you'll press them towards the center back. Now that we've finished the darts, we're going to attach the back bodice to the back skirt and we're going to sew it at 5 8 inch seam allowance and we're going to flip the lining up so that we don't catch that when we sew it. Now that you have attached the back bodice to both skirt pieces, you're going to press the seam allowance up towards the bodice and then trim it so it's not as bulky. 
Now we're going to attach the front of the dress to the back of the dress. Okay, so you'll lay each back piece on top of the front right sides together, and then you're going to flip the back lining up and pin the sides down and don't catch that back lining. You're gonna leave it free. Okay, so now that you've sewed the side seams, um, you can also finish them with your overlocker or a zigzag stitch. You're going to take the back lining that you left free and flip it over the front, and then you're gonna stitch that at 5 8 inch. Once you've stitched it, you're go you can flip it right sides out, and then you can see that it creates a nice clean finish on the inside of the dress. Okay, so now I'm going to add the strap adjusters. This step is totally optional. It's not in the instructions. If you wanna skip this step, you're gonna just atta attach the shoulder strap to the back bodice. Okay, once you pin it, you're going to sew it and then trim the seam and then you can turn it right sides out and you have either your straps attached or your loop for your strap. Now you'll understitch the back bodice along this edge and you'll just go as far as you can. Okay, I've understitched the back bodice and I've also finished the edges of the back skirt where the zipper is going to go and now we will move on to the zipper. We're going to be doing an invisible zipper. Um, I have an invisible zipper foot, and let me tell you, it is life-changing. If you have one, definitely use that or learn how to use it. If you don't, I know that Joanne sells some. My machine came with one, but I definitely recommend using that. Um, before you do this step, you are going to iron out the teeth of the zipper. You're going to want those teeth not curled under, but you're going to want them to lay flat. Once you've ironed the zipper teeth, you're going to pin the zipper onto the dress and sew it like you would any other zipper. Just be careful not to catch the lining when you sew it on. Okay, so once I finish the first side of the zipper, what I'm gonna do is zip it up and then mark on the zipper teeth where that seam line is. Then when I go and pin it onto the other side and sew it, I can match up that notch. And then once it's finished, when I zip it up, those seams will match up perfectly.
All right, and once you've finished the zipper, make sure you like it. The next step is to sew the bottom of the skirt below the zipper. Okay, once you've finished the bottom of the skirt, we're going to finish the back bodice. You'll flip the lining over the bodice and the zipper and you'll stitch that and then repeat it on the other side. And then you can flip everything right sides out and make sure it's all pressed and looks nice. And then we'll move on to slip stitching the back bodice to the lining. Um, I am going to stitch in the ditch again like I did on the front bodice, but if you prefer, you can slip stitch it. And once you're done with the back lining and the back bodice, we're going to hem the skirt. And you'll just fold it up by one and one fourths inch and press it, and then you can sew it down. I did a double fold, you can do that, or you can just finish the edge and turn it up and press it. Okay, next step is to sew the front slits. And you can see the illustration here, how you can fold it underneath and then stitch up it, over and then down. Okay, I've hemmed the dress and finished the front slits. And the very last step is to sew on your buttons. I'm just gonna hand sew those really quick and then I will show you guys the finished dress. <laughs> 